So let's go a little bit further with normal distributions and do something a bit more advanced. I just want to remind you though about this. So let's we'll try to remember uh, what the mean is. The mean of a standard uh, of a normal distribution. Sorry, we write it as mu. We write that the standard deviation. I'll write this down here. Standard deviation. We write sigma since we assume it's the population. So these are the important things, at least from this part here. Those are the revision. Um, well, we could also say that if we do the graph right here like this here, this is what a normal distribution looks like, something like this. This right here, the middle point, would be the mean. This right here would be you know, the mean plus one standard deviation. This would be the mean minus one standard deviation. And don't forget the area under the curve is the probability. And sometimes these normal curves, some people call them bell curves because I guess it kind of looks like a bell, I suppose, right? If you sort of draw it like this, doesn't it kind of, I don't know, I'm not a very good artist, but something like this right here, couldn't it sort of look like a bell, I guess? So I know that uh, Americans, for example, they have these, uh, you know, peppers, they call them bell peppers. So look, it's a bell curve. Doesn't it look like an upside down normal curve? Ha ha ha. So let's uh, learn how to use your calculator to do this. So this is when you know the minimum, the maximum, the mean, and the standard deviation. So you want to know the area underneath a curve. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to um, use something called normal CDF. And this will always give you the probability. Okay, that's going to be the key thing here. And the mean, remember, is sigma. Oh, oops, sorry, it's not sigma. It's mu. Standard deviation, that's sigma. And this is going to be the key here. We're going to be doing this. This is going to be the big, big important part here. So I'll put this big red thing. This is the important thing. Normal CDF. Now we always use CDF. So always use CDF for normal. So for binomial, we have binomial PDF and CDF. But for normal distributions, we're just going to use normal CDF. Okay. Now, it depends if you use the TI Inspire or the 84, but you get to it in the same place where we got the normal, uh, sorry, the binomial distributions. We go to probability and distributions and normal CDF, or we go to distributions and scroll down to find it. But that's it. You just got to know the minimum, the maximum. Basically, where do you want to start finding the area? Because this is sort of the idea, right? Is that if you have some sort of area like this, you have to know, hey, where do you want to start? Okay, I want to start here. Where do I want to finish? Maybe I start uh, here. Okay, good. So that way, you know, you would know this here might be your min. This here might be your max. You know, uh, and you have to know the mean. You have to know the standard deviation. So maybe that's sigma here. Something like that. So you have to know these these things. But once you know the min, the max, the mean, standard deviation, then you can tell the probability. And that's how we do it. So let's do an example. Like this one here with the uh, Tyrannosaurus rexes. If you're happy and you know it, clap your... Oh... <laughs> His arms are too short. So we're going to assume that Tyrannosaurus rex or T-rex heights are normally distributed. We have a mean of 5.5 meters and a standard deviation of 0.5. Now I've made a funny assumption here. I mean, I've assumed that, first of all, that they, they exist at the same time as us, which they don't. I've assumed that if you see one, they're going to attack you immediately. Obviously, it's a bit ridiculous, but I'm basically just saying, what would be the probability of choosing one that is shorter than five meters, okay? I just tried to make it a little bit more silly, but obviously, they don't attack you. They're not alive. Um, so what's the probability of a T-Rex that's shorter than five meters? That's the important part here. So I think it really helps to draw the normal distribution here. So this is a normal distribution, like this. All right, and this right here, let's see here now. Um, this right here is the height in meters. That's on the x-axis. I know that my mean right here is 5.5 meters. I know my standard deviation here is actually, uh, well, if it goes plus 5.5 uh, 5 .5 plus 0.5, that'll be 6. This right here will be 5. Basically, the question is, what's the probability that we find a T-Rex that's shorter than 5? In other words, I'm looking for this. This is what I want. So one way to do it would be, so I'll just say uh, method one. Let's use normal CDF, just like I was discussing. It's a normal 
C, D, F. Let's do that. And we'll put in the minimum. Now, what's the minimum I should put here? Should I put in zero? Like, what's the smallest number? I mean, you should attempt to put in minus infinity if you can. Obviously, you can't, but do, the, do a really small number. Maximum should be 5. Mean should be 5.5. Standard deviation should be 0 0.5. Okay? This is what you should do. Again, just to remind you what everything is here. This is the min. This is the max. This is the mean. This is the standard deviation. Let's go ahead and do this on our calculator and see if we can find this. So it should actually be that easy, this question. So I'll get out my trusty calculator here and see if it can help me. I'm going to say calculator, please help. I'll go to menu, I'll go to probability, distributions, and I'll say normal CDF. Now where's my lower bound? I'll just say like, I don't know, minus 1 times 10 to the 99, just like a really big negative number. Upper bound is 5, mean is 5.5, standard deviation is 0 0.5. I say go. Do you notice? Normal CDF, min, max, mean, standard deviation. It says it's 0.159, let's just say. So it's approximately 0 0.159. Nine. There we go. That was one method of doing this, and I'm done. Now, you could have done a different method. So method two would have been, just because we happen to be symmetric here, so this is the normal way to do it, but you could have, because we're sitting right on something that fits with the normal distributions, you could have looked at it like this. You could have said, hey, hold on, I know that um, from minus one standard deviation to the next, I know that that is 0 0.68. If you memorize that number right there, I know that that's 0 0.68. So that means that from, from 50 to over here, then that must be, let me just draw it here like this. Maybe I'll do it in uh, purple. This piece right here, well, I know that that then must be 0 0.34 then, because if the whole thing, like from here to here is 0.68, then this right here will be 0.34. And if I want to know what this piece right here is, this right here is what I want here. I'll say want. Well, I know that half of the whole thing, remember I know also that if I go like this right here, I know that half of this right here, that's 0 0.5. So I could say then that 0 0.5 minus 0 0.34, what's that? What's that 0 0.16? Hey, look at that, it's pretty much 0.159. Now that's just because we happen to be very lucky. We happen to be sitting on a value that's right at, you know, what the mean plus or minus one standard deviation is. Keep in mind, we're very lucky with this. Any other situation, you would have had to use method one. But I thought it was kind of an interesting way to do it. Now, what's the probability of being attacked by a T-Rex with a size? So here we have a different situation altogether. Well, still, the mean is still 5.5. This is still 6. This is still 5. Except now we're looking for, hey, what's, what is it if it's between 5.2 and 6.3? So now this is different. So I don't know, 5.2 is something like this, and 6.3, I don't know, maybe is over here. So we'll just assume it's this area right here we're trying to find. I don't think we can use any clever tricks. I think we're just going to need our calculator for this. So I'm going to use normal CDF. Normal CDF. I'm going to put in the min. The minimum is 5.2. The maximum is 6.3. The mean is 5.5, the standard deviation is 0 0.5. So again, just to remind you, that's what we've been doing, right? This is the min, max, mean, standard deviation. And let's see what we get here. So I'm going to do that again, so normal CDF. And, I mean, you can grab it, or I can just go and do it again. Probability, distributions, normal CDF. So where do I want to start? 5.2, please, and I want to go to 6.3, I want this to be 5.5, and I want this to be 0 0.5. Say go. Notice it tells me 0.671 if I do three significant figures, so 0 0.671, and it's approximately equal to that. It's not exactly. But there we go. That's how we do this. You see, it's not so bad. You just got to know how to use your calculator and know when to use it, right? So we use normal CDF, put in the min, max, mean, standard deviation. Boom, you got this.